Hey everybody, this is Mike from the One Stop Co-op Shop, and I am very excited to show you the game we're looking at today. This is Agamonia, a campaign adventure game for one to four players. And if you watch our streaming channel, you might have already seen this. We played through the first two scenarios of the tutorial, which is also available on Tabletop Simulator. But I was lucky enough to get a physical prototype of the tutorial, and I'm going to finish it up with the third scenario. But if you don't want the spoilers for that, I'm going to do the impressions of the game, my thoughts on it, which I usually do at the end of videos, uh, right at the beginning, so you can hear my thoughts and I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler. They are positive. And then I'll get into that full Scenario 3 playthrough if you want to see how the game looks in its most complicated tutorial mission. But before we get to all of that, a quick reminder that we never accept compensation for our Kickstarter coverage. We just want to help you make an informed decision. And also a reminder that there's lots of great ways to get involved with One Stop Co-op Shop and support us. We have a Patreon where you can get early access to our videos and vote on what we play. We have, as I already mentioned, a separate streaming channel and a weekly podcast, and we have a Discord you can come and talk to us on. But let's jump right into my impressions of Agamonia and then get to the game. So like I said, the short answer for Agamonia is that I love it. I'm hoping to get a review copy, but if not, I'm all in for this one anyway. But I do want to say right off the bat that this game hits a lot of things that I love in games, so it might not be as good for you if you have very different preferences. First of all, even in the prototype, all the boards you play on are within a book, kind of like Jaws of the Lion or Stuff Fables or that kind of thing. And I absolutely love this in games. I hate hunting for tiles. I hate uh, putting little pieces of cardboard together. Having a beautifully illustrated and thematic board to play on is always better in my book, unless it's like a roguelike where the entire point of it is a randomized dungeon. I also love the art for the game. Look at these black and white illustrations. The flavor text is well written. And I'm a big fan of old choose your own adventures like Lone Wolf is one of my favorite series. And this art looks straight out of those Joe Deaver classics. So definitely hit some nostalgia buttons for me and makes me really happy. But probably the main thing I like about this game, at least what I've played so far, is that it's kind of light. The mechanics are pretty straightforward. They're quick to teach, but it still has a great sense of narrative and still has a lot of tough choices and resource management as you play. Your characters will be moving around these boards and you have these letters with ranges indicated. And when you get within the right range of a letter, you get to draw a card. It has flavor text, has a great illustration. And often by like passing a skill check or getting to a different distance, you'll get to flip it over and earn rewards and kind of advance the story. It's quick, it's smooth, it's thematic. You don't have to read a ton. It's not like you're reading for 10 minutes before the game even starts. It's all kind of integrated within the gameplay. And it lets them do some really, really cool stuff in the system. Like without giving too many spoilers, in this very first scenario, you can like leap over this bar to make your way more quickly to rescue the person by this trap door. And some of the cards, when you interact with them the right way, even become overlays that change the map and kind of change your environment. I just love all this stuff. And again, the mechanics are very straightforward, not boring or dull, but straightforward. So it all works really smoothly. And speaking of those smooth mechanics, you'll have two to four heroes. So in solo, you have to control at least two of them. And they have unique mixes of skills. Even in the prototype, they have nice diversity. But they've already been showing off in the campaign that each of the different characters has two different classes they can go into, each of which lets them unlock a bunch of unique special powers. And based on which class line they go down, they'll unlock even more unique actions. And by the end of the game, you'll have like six or eight of these things out of like 11 or 12 for each class. So even if you replay through, you can switch up your heroes, you can switch up their classes, should have a lot of nice variety in what your characters do there. But the mechanics with your characters are really simple. You pick an action on your turn and the color of the symbol next to the action will determine your initiative. Generally, red is fastest, green is slowest. You get one maneuver per turn. You can take an action to get an extra one, which lets you move. You have stamina you can spend to move further to make stronger attacks. That's also your damage. So when enemies hit you, it gets flipped to its damage side and gets taken off of the stack. And then you can rest and take a recover maneuver to get your health back, to get stamina back. And I just in general love these kind of stamina systems like in Descent 2nd Edition and Imperial Assault and all these kind of games. It's a fun resource to play with. You can do awesome things, but you're going to tire yourself out. You have to like figure out the right times to rest. Uh, just really, really good stuff. I also really like the basic action resolution mechanic. Uh, each character has these different stats here, and that's how many of these action dice you roll. And I love these dice. You can get basic successes. You can get an exploding success. Always love exploding dice. So you keep the success and roll again. And one of the coolest mitigatable results, we've seen this in a few games. I'm thinking of like the Sadler Brothers, for example. This symbol means you can spend up to two stamina to get an equal number of successes. So in a way, it's much better than the one success because it can give you two instead of one. But it's going to cost you again that resource, which makes that resource management even more interesting. 
And then adding on even more fun choices as you complete scenarios based on different achievements you complete, you'll get these little achievement tokens and they can be used to give you an extra success when you roll. They can be used to give you extra movement so you can kind of make sure that big roll goes off without a hitch when you need it to. And even the items are pretty interesting. The ones we have here are super basic, but you can for free on your turn switch items out so that your hands don't get too full. And they aren't just used for attacking, they interact with the environment too. Like if you come to a fallen tree, having an axe will let you get a bonus to any roll to like get it out of your way. And enemies, once they show up, are straightforward, but still really tactically interesting. Each round after you pick your actions, you draw an initiative card, and it's going to tell where the heroes of different colors go, and also where the enemies go, and which of three possible actions they take. And if you go before the enemies, you can see this ahead of time, and you can see exactly how far they'll move, what kind of attack they'll make. And their AI is very straightforward. They generally go towards the closest person, so you can get out of range of them. You can put the person with the best defense in front of them for the type of attack they're making. So again, it's really quick to resolve. It takes like two seconds, but they do interesting and varied things that the heroes can intelligently react to. That's my ideal kind of AI system in general. So yeah, not to mince words, I love how you take actions in this game. I love the resource management. I think the theme is great. I think the components look nice. I am really excited about this one. But there are some things I want to point out just for prospective backers to think about. So first of all, from what I've played in the tutorials and from what I've seen on the campaign page, it sounds like a very long campaign, I think over 30 scenarios, but a very linear one where you can choose what order you do missions in sometimes, but I think you do all of them each time you play the campaign. Now, I have to say, I've played the first and second tutorial mission, I think, three times each at this point, and I would still be happy to play them again, because even though I've seen all the surprises, the core mechanics are fun, and especially if I was playing with a new group to kind of show it off and have them experience it, that would be really cool. But just keep in mind, after one play of a scenario, you're going to kind of see its tricks, so that might bother some groups. Now, they do have achievements that sometimes push you to do kind of off-the-wall things, so if you're like that kind of gamer, kind of experimental, you might enjoy that. But beyond that, I don't think there's anything that's going to vary how the scenarios play out. At least I haven't seen that yet. And also, I haven't seen any difficulty modifiers. I would love if they had a way to make the game tougher. And it seems like it would be pretty simple to do by like shortening the timer or something. But I haven't seen that in the rules I've seen so far. So I'd love for them to add some difficulty levers for players to play around with, especially on their second or third time through the campaign. Another minor concern I want to share, and this is on the second scenario where I kind of saw this, but they had a part in the second scenario without spoilers where players kind of have to do things in a certain order. And if the players are waiting for one player to do their part of that job and they fail, the other players can't progress. And they sometimes just kind of sit around not taking interesting actions. So that's just a general suggestion to the uh, designers and the developers to uh, maybe avoid that where like one player is key to progressing, like everyone's waiting for them to get back with the key because that's just not too much fun if you're just sitting around doing nothing. And of course, you might want to be careful of this one if you hate dice. Although, again, every single die gives you at least one success and often more, although it might cost you stamina. I really like these dice. They don't really feel like they mess you up just because of bad luck too often, unless you're going for a really, really tough test and you are not prepared for it. I mean, then it can still go badly, but pretty much anytime you're going for a reasonable test, you're going to be okay and you might have an awesome result. Another thing to note that might bother some players is that the turns are very fast, which I love, but if you're looking for like Gloomhaven where you have to like pick through a ton of options, all you're doing here is picking an action and when your turn comes up, you move and you take that action and that's basically all you do. Now there's a lot of cool choices with like stamina there and how you take the action and which action you take, but it's not a heavy crawler, it's not a heavy adventure game and if that's really what you're after, it might let you down a bit. So those are a few things to be aware of, some potential cautions, but like I said, I really love this one and let me show you why by jumping into scenario three, which I have not played. I've been waiting until <laughs> this video to dive into it so you can have the surprises along with me. Uh, it should be awesome. Let's try it. All right, so this is scenario three, the secrets of the ancients. If you didn't watch the streamed plays of scenarios one and two, in scenario one, we were trying to escape a flooded inn and we met this Ignisaur, this uh, one-eyed wizard lady who uh, kind of took us away from there. And then in the second scenario, we were trying to safely get her wagon called Birdie along with this uh, creature that was pulling it to safety. But then uh, she flew off and was fighting an evil wizard and explosions were happening from the wizard having set traps. And in my case, I did not get the best results with the two heroes I'm currently using. I did manage to save the Togrel, the creature that was pulling the wagon, but the wagon itself got blown up, and I think it's going to have an effect later on in the scenario. But let's read some flavor text and set things up, show you my heroes, and jump right in. You are still shocked from the magic bolt. The leaves in the trees behind you still smoldering. 
Desperate not to get hit again, you run from the forest towards the strange lights. As you follow the road, you find the derelict ruins of an old pagan town built around a strange round hill. On top of the hill, your friend Shantor Three Birds is caught in a magical battle against a menacing robed figure. He must be the one who cast those magic bolts into the forest. Powerful magics radiate in all directions, painting the clouds first in scarlet, then in blue. Something about them or the hill itself seems to attract your runic plate, which has started to vibrate. You witness the enemy grab Shantor with his powerful magic and throw her down inside the hill itself. How is that even possible? The evil sorcerer looks your way. He is holding a crimson orb, its light reflected from inside his hood, as if he had a glowing red eye. He hesitates for a moment, perhaps preparing a spell, but then glances at the orb again. Instead of attacking you, he steps on a metallic disc which starts to levitate and then takes him northwards away from the scene of the battle. Before you have a chance to react, you see a strange vision. It is Shantor. She tells you that the hill was built by the ancients, but is now full of harmful Aox magic created by the powerful sorcerer she was fighting against. The evil energy is clashing with her good magic and is about to cause an implosion that will pollute this whole region. You must enter the hill and stop this from happening. You must hurry since Shantor herself is in trouble too. All right, and now in the rule book, we have the setup stuff. Most of it is standardized and I've already done it, but I'm going to show you a few things. So first of all, my characters just unlock some new action abilities and we have space for two of them. Each character always has the focus action, which gives you a bonus to your ability checks for the turn or the extra maneuver action that lets you move more or recover more. But for Mata Jam here, my four armed archer, my three options are aim to shot. It costs one stamina to do a three dice ranged attack and he does have a bow, so that's pretty awesome. Dancing Blade is also one stamina with very fast initiative, a melee attack for two dice with a free move before or after. And finally, Swift Strike, also the fastest red initiative, is either melee or range for just two dice. The very basic one, the only one that doesn't cost any stamina. So I'm going to be a little gutsy and take both of the ones that cost stamina and maybe run out frequently. We'll see how it goes. And by the way, from the previous scenario, Mata Jam has a small bow. Not very good. It's minus one damage on every attack. Also has a hand axe and a hook and rope, also minus one damage, so not doing much there. And he has four of those achievement tokens to give some mitigation, three money, one healing flower, one stamina recovering flower. Oh, there we go. And my second hero is Dranosh Eight Songs. He's got a fiery strike, two stamina, but it can be a ranged or melee attack for three. That's pretty expensive. And currently he doesn't have a ranged weapon. He does have a great axe, which is plus one damage, unlike uh, Matajam's axe that was minus one. So that's pretty awesome. I don't know if I need the three dice. Lingering Heave costs no stamina, but it's only two dice and it's green, so it tends to be slower initiative, might not hit before the enemies go. And then finally, Disengage. It's only melee and does cost one stamina, but it's faster, still two dice, and Evade one means I'll cancel basically the first damage I would take for moving out of a space with an enemy. So, I mean, I think having a fast option and then maybe a slow option with my axe. I don't know if I need the extra die and just two stamina sounds ridiculous. So no Fiery Strike for you. Yeah, anyway, he's got that great axe. He's got a shovel. Probably never going to use that unless it's for a skill check. And he's got a cube of annihilation. It's a one time ridiculous bomb four dice within uh, one range of the area. He throws it and better automatic damage from the dice side that would normally uh, cost stamina to use. And he's also got some achievement tokens, some money, a mushroom, a healing thing. He's holding the stone plate that the sorcerer told us to hang on to. He's got this wooden amulet we earned. No idea what that does. Oh, and I should mention that Matajam was a Togrel Whisperer from the first scenario. I'm not sure if that'll come into play. If it does, I'll put it back on the board. And we also have a recommendation letter to someone we can meet in the town we're going to. But again, I don't think that's going to come into this scenario. And speaking of the scenario, here's the whole dang thing. We're starting down here in the corner. And there's at least one letter F that we'll have line of sight to when we take our first turn. But uh, we'll get some other things set up before that. And just to note some things I see before we go into a more zoomed in view, looks like there's some kind of altar over here, but with spider webs all around it, that's not great. And then on this side down in this structure, it looks like all the doorways that would go in are blocked by blue lightning. And then there's like some red lightning here. So I'm assuming something about like this altar or that altar uh, will allow me to shut those down. This one's shining blue and that one's shining sort of pinkish. Maybe that would be blue and red. We'll find out. But first, the setup says we have to play this card. Skitterers Crawl, they were waiting for you to come. So normally story cards like this will tell you at what range you have to be before you can flip them or you have to like take a test to flip them. But for cards like this where you're spawning enemies, it has an infinite range. So we just immediately flip this. Waiting Ceremony. So we're going to place Skitterers. We're going to put into play enemy card one. That'll have their stats. It says a number of Skitterers start on the scenario map according to the number of discarded fate cards. So we got a medium result in the last scenario. So we're going to start with three of these guys. It looks like they'll start in one, two, three. 
And each of the skitters is numbered from one to 10. You randomly place them when you spawn them and they're going to activate from lowest to highest number when it's their turn. And there they are a bit away, but certainly close enough to attack soon. And here's the Skitter activation card. They have a board for each type of enemy, so you can keep track of the damage they've taken. Uh, in this case, Skitters have two life per hero, so it's going to take four damage to defeat each of them. They've got a blue skull here, which means they have blue initiative. That's when they'll activate based on those initiative cards. They have one damage if you leave a space with them, although remember my one character's evade would cancel that. And then if you watch the Scenario 2 video, they're a bit more complicated in this one. Now they have a regeneration ability where they can heal themselves for three. And they've got the same bite and leg stab, but now they might get like a little skull symbol next to it that'll give them extra movement to uh, charge and attack us. But with that, we're set up. Let's take our first round and see if we can crush these bugs. So I'll kind of explain the core mechanics as we go. The first step of the round is that each of the heroes is going to pick which action they want to do. Then we're going to reveal the first initiative card, which will show when we'll act and when the skitterers will act. When the skitterer's turn comes up, they'll move based on their AI. When it's our turn, we'll take our action and our maneuver in whatever order we like, and then we'll rinse and repeat. So let's see, in this case, it looks like it's pretty likely we'll be in range of at least one of these skitterers on the first turn. We can move up. So I think I'm going to take attack actions. For Mata Jam, definitely going to pick aimed shot, one stamina for a very powerful range attack. And his small bow can shoot one or two areas away so he can reach them. Whereas I don't think Dranosh is worried about going quickly here. It might even be nice if they move towards us first. But he's going to take Lingering Heave, his basic option. And here's our first action. This is a, not a bad one. So red enemies will go. We don't have any. Then blue enemies will take the full eye action. We'll see that in a second. Then red heroes, which is nobody. Blue heroes, which is Matajam with his range attack. And finally green heroes, which is Dranosh with his melee attack. So we saw the Skitters had a fully open eyeball for blue. There were no other symbols for them to regenerate or gain a charge bonus. So they're going to move one towards the closest hero. And if they got into the same space as us, which is where you have to be to make melee attacks, they would bite us for three damage. Now for movement, characters can cross over single white borders. They cannot cross over double white borders. Those are obstacles like walls or hills. And they also can't cross over double red borders, but you can make range attacks over those. You can see over those. They're just kind of like blocking terrain. All right, so number one is first. He'll move one, number four, and number eight. <laughs> All very simple to resolve. I guess I could go here or here. It doesn't really matter. Okay, next up is Matajam with his blue initiative. So we can take his aim shot now. Yeah, I mean, there's one right in range. Let's do it. So he'll spend one stamina. I take this from the top and I put it above his player board. And then I'm rolling a range attack with three red dice, and it's modified by his range weapon, which sadly is minus one damage. And he can shoot up to two areas away, which is one, two, definitely nothing in the way. Basically, only other figures will cause you hindrances and subtract from damage. I don't have any of that. So here we go. Ooh, okay, so that's one damage. Remember, the bow is minus one, so right now he's doing nothing. But for each of these, he can spend up to two stamina and get that many successes. So if he spends four stamina, oh my gosh, that'll be five successes, minus one because of his dumb bows modifier. That'll do four damage. That'll be a one-shot kill, although a very expensive one, but I'm going to do it. So this number four skitter goes back into the pool. He could be spawned again later. Oh, and whoops, 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 I forgot. Uh, F says a three underneath it, and we are one, two, three within three range. So we get to see that card and what it's about. That should have happened before Matajam actually did his attack. The chasm. The violently shaking ground has opened a deep chasm in the earth. The webs near it are broken, but you hear the sounds of skitterers scuttling about inside the dark gap. Oh, we're spawning again? Oh man, so this would happen right away. Oh, never mind. Crawling out from below, this uses fate cards, which get discarded at the end of the round. You'll see them soon. So at the end of each round, when we discard a fate card, we're going to check the number with two heroes. We're looking for a five. And if we get a five, we're going to look at the arrow on the fate card. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here's a three that would not spawn, and it's got a little up arrow here. So if that card had been a five because of the up arrow, it would have spawned a skitterer right there. So we have a chance to spawn at the end of every round when we draw our fate card. So that's exciting. We'll just keep that to the side. Now, in terms of other letters, once we get within one of G, we'll get to see what that one's about. And once we get into the same space as D, we can check that out. And now that Matajan did his action, he can take his maneuver. He could have done it in the other order, although you do have to finish one before you do the other. So he could move two spaces, he could spend a stamina to move three, or he could recover two damage stamina or three exhausted stamina. That attack was so expensive, I think I'm just going to get three back and stay where he is for now. All right, and finally, to close out the round, Dranosh is up. He's got a melee attack with his great axe. He could once per turn switch out what his equipped weapons are. He can have up to two hands equipped, and the great axe does take two hands. And by the way, Matajam has a bow and another weapon equipped because he has four hands. He's a forearm dude. 
But clearly here, I want to take my maneuver first. I think the closest guy is three away. So I'll spend one stamina to get three movement with my maneuver. And then once I get over there, I'll take a swing with my plus one damage axe. So one, two, three will get us there. We will not be within one of G because the red space still counts as one space. So that's two away. But we will be within one of E, which could be good or bad. I hope nobody spawns. And just point out two more things about spaces. Some of them have a red blood droplet. That means that they have a hazard in them. In this case, they have a two agility damage attack as we get cut on like these sharp plants. But those were all over scenario two. Here, it looks like they're pretty rare. And the other thing is each space on the board has a number of dots. That's how many figures can fit inside of it. Although if a space is full, instead of doing a melee attack from inside of that space, you can melee attack from an adjacent space. So having a space be full does not like lock you out of hurting someone. All right, so I'll go one, two, three, and I have to immediately look at E before I do anything else. The light of the moons. The rare and delicate moon egg is easy to spot from afar. The petals are deep purple, but its swollen stamen is full of a luminous pink fluid. The flower is known for its healing properties, but in clumsy hands, it is easily destroyed. All right, so I can pick the moon egg up if I'm at range zero in its space, which currently I'm not. I just saw it from afar. And then I have to do a four difficulty agility test. I'll say right now that Matajam is way better at agility, so I'm probably going to wait for him to do it. I flip the card over in any case if I take that test, which, by the way, does not count as an action. Skill tests like this, ability tests, they happen at any time you want on your turn as long as you're within range. Like you can uh, interrupt your movement to do them and then continue moving. You can do before or after your action. But yeah, so for this one, it looks like if I uh, fail the test, I'll just break it and it'll be gone. But let's get back to the main event for this turn. This guy's swinging his axe at that dude. So he's getting two dice. And remember, his axe, better than that bow, it gives him plus one damage. Wow. So one, two, plus one from the axe is three. And he'll spend one more stamina that can be up to two to get a fourth hit. You are no match for my new increased abilities. So yeah, only one bad guy left. And with this uh, wall blocking us, he's not going to be able to get to either of my characters, probably with any of his attacks next turn. So with both characters done their turn, we discard a fate card and it is not a five. So we're not spawning another skitterer with two players. All right. So another turn, what do we want to do? I think we're going to have Matajam catch up or maybe recover some more with an extra maneuver so he can move twice or he can move and then recover or vice versa. And it's a green action, which tends to be last in turn after blue characters, for example. And I'm going to do the same thing with Dranash, have him take his green basic attack again. The reason being, odds are this blue initiative skitterer will go before us. Like I said, he can't really reach us, but he'll probably move into range for like Dranash to run up and stab him after he helps us out by coming closer. But will it actually work out that way? No, of course it won't. <laughs> so yeah, green characters first. Sometimes they switch it up. Uh, then blue here. So both of us are going to go here. And then they're going to go with their semi-awake attack. That is an agility attack and two movement, but plus one movement because of this charge bonus. Man. And yeah, and here's a real bummer about that. Dranash cannot reach him with even his boosted three movement with one stamina. One, two, three. He can't jump over the red. But you know what the hey, I don't like getting attacked without being able to respond. So I'm going to spend one of Dranash's. I can have either of them go first, by the way, because they're both green. So I'll have Dranash go first and I'll have him spend one of his achievement tokens that he earned to boost his movement to four. And he also needs to spend one stamina to get to three in the first place, then boost it. So he'll be able to run up there and take another swing with his great axe, hopefully kill this guy in one go. Now, here's the question. I could go one, two, three, four and skirt around this D space. It looks like it has webs. I feel like running through there would be a mistake. I feel like I would get caught in the webs. So I'm going to assume that that might be true. I'm going to go one, two, three. Before I finish my last movement, I have to see what C. Oh, and AR, because that's one away. You can see over red, and that's two away, one, two. So I'm going to see everything over there. So first, see a crystal on a pedestal. Inside the walls is a pedestal holding a blue crystal. The pedestal is as weathered as the rest of the ruin, but the crystal is shiny and clean. This valuable and magical Agura crystal would not have survived here for centuries without being taken by robbers or skitterers. Someone must have put it here recently to power up something. <laughs> Sounds like uh, maybe those blue force fields that we saw. We can take the magical crystal if we go into that space. And then, oh God, what is this? The mother. You spot something big moving behind the ruins. Before you have a chance to react, a Venorian hive mother rises up and towers over you, webbing dripping from her body. She seems uninterested in your presence and you realize it may be better to keep her docile. Oh crud, mother's instinct. If we attack a skitterer, we have to flip her. So uh, <laughs> we could just leave skitterer number eight alone. Should we do that? Yeah, maybe we should. Maybe we should. Uh -huh. 
I'll try the path of peace for a little bit. We'll see how it goes. So here's the thing. Dranash had chosen an attack action, right? So I'm just going to waste his turn. But the nice thing is you can always choose to cancel whatever action you had and instead move one extra space or recover one stamina. Uh, so I guess I don't have to use my achievement token anymore, but I like the idea of getting to this crystal faster. So we'll use the achievement token for that, and then we'll give up my action to get into C and flip it over. Oh, and I can just pick it up. Awesome. No skill test needed. A magical crystal. You feel the Aguru crystal's magical energies. You're moved from the pedestal. You can feel its warmth and power in your hand. A low hum that had surrounded the ruins dwindles. You had not noticed it was there, but its lower pitch now makes it obvious. Did the crystal power something inside the hill? Probably. So it is removed from the game and we get a crystal on Drenash. And here we go. I'm not sure if it'll like just take out one force field or more than one. I guess we'll find out. And that's it for Drenash. She's just saying hi to the mother because she'll only flip if we attack one of her skitterers. Man, now I really wish that guy had gone first. I could have killed him before she ever even knew I was there. And now Mata Jam is next. Uh, he can move twice or recover, so I could do a two or three move. And I'm not sure if this will be a possibility, but I'd actually prefer to have Mata Jam closer to the skitterer because the skitterer is doing a leg stab this turn, which is an agility attack. It's two damage opposed by agility. You'll see how that works in a second. The bite is a three attack opposed by strength. And Matajam has better agility, so he has a better chance of not being hurt by that guy if he can kind of tank for uh, Dranash. But then again, should we go check out G? It looks like it's a mushroom, and I don't really need another recovery mushroom, so I don't know if that's important. But I do want to kind of find out what B is. All right, so I'm going to have Matajam take two normal two-move maneuvers. We'll go one, two, and then what the hey? We'll go one, two. We'll pull this guy off towards us because he's going to go toward the closest person, and that will put us in range of seeing what B is. Under the shadow of a goddess, a large statue of Lanamora, the old pagan goddess of the Nitigri, overlooks the whole ruin. In the shadow of the statue are the remnants of a building that do not seem to be a house exactly, more like a covering for a hole or a cellar door. Beneath the vines and skitterer webs, there are spiral stairs leading downwards. Ooh, so if we move in there, we can descend underground. But that's it for Matajam and Drenosh. Uh, the skitterer goes last. And just to show you again, the initiative card had a partially open eye with a horn icon. So he's going to do a leg stab. He would normally move two, but the charge bonus is one more. So we can move up to three to attack, but not that it really matters. Bam, there we go. And this is something else I forgot to say I like a lot about the game. Enemies never roll for their attacks. They do a flat damage, like two agility damage here. And instead, we roll our matching stat to oppose it using these blue dice. Uh, right now, this symbol does nothing unless you get armor upgrades to let it appeal to something but the shields will cancel one damage for each we roll. So like I said, Matajam has three agility. He's better at this. Two damage incoming. We want those shields. Bam, we got no damage. But does it show how it would have worked if we had been damaged? We would flip from the top as much damage as we took, so we are losing stamina. And damage is slower to recover. A basic recover action heals two damage instead of three stamina. If you take damage when you're all out of your basic stack, it'll start coming from your recoverable stamina. And if you would get hurt once everything is gone, you flip to your wounded side, you get an injury card, just all kinds of badness. What was I at? I think it was two, hopefully. There we go. All right, we get another fate card. Still no spawn. Hooray. All right, so if we're going to try still not to mess with Mommy, uh, Matajam's going to take some damage from running away from the Skitterer, but I think he can go over here and go underground. And if that isn't a good place for him to go, he's got a little way out here. That's an obstacle. He can't cross over that, but he can run that way away from the skitterer. Assuming he goes fast enough, which uh, is not a guarantee. And then Drenash can maybe head around here, uh, maybe toward that healing thing we saw. And that would get him close to this uh, first blue force field. We can see what Jay says. Maybe it'll let us get in with that uh, crystal we took. So yeah, um, I think I want Mata Jam to get out of there. I think I'm going to do focus, which means I'll have red, the best chance of going first, and I'll have plus one to my defense rolls if the skitterer does catch up to me or attack first. And Drenosh will also go for red, but for an extra maneuver. He can recover some stamina or move farther. Will those jerks play along? No, my gosh. <laughs> Now, the good part is they can't regenerate. That's the regeneration symbol. And they're going to do the agility attack again, but he's still on Matajam. And Matajam's going to roll four dice for defense instead of three since he picked the focus action. And then we'll both go. All right. So it's a two dice attack from the Skitterer. Again, Matajam's got four blue dice. We'll roll another one if we need to. We do not. Double shield. All right. All right. And uh, we can have Matajam or Drenosh go first. They're both red. We'll have Matajam move into B and uh, he'll spend one stamina to get three movement. Now, because he's leaving a space with a Skitterer, 
And the Skitter has got a one damage value here. He's going to take one damage just for leaving. So he's definitely looking a bit tired, but he's got three movement. Let's spend one and descend into the spiral stairs. Beneath the goddess, you've descended the winding stairs, but the passage further is overgrown. You can easily move the vines aside if you want to move along. Okay, reveal story card, circle, place it next to the scenario map. Heroes and enemies may spend one movement point to move from one area containing B to the other containing B. So I don't even see another B on the map. Let's see, an abandoned chamber. This dark vault has been nicely preserved from robbers, if not from flora. The air is damp and heavy. Under the plants at the back, you see a stone tablet. Okay, so let's continue onwards. Oh, we have a whole different thing in here? Cool. Although clearly the skitters could come in as well. So I have three movement left. I have to spend one movement to go in here. And before I continue, I can see what Y is. Oh, no, no, no. Don't do this to me. A cellar skitterer. The mossy cellar is home to an angry skitterer. Behind the bug is a broken stone table, the victim of a rock fall. On the table is a stone lid covering something that radiates with magical energy. So first we got to spawn a skitterer in Y. And then if we're in that space, but with no enemies there, we can take a three strength check to open up the thing and find the magical item. It might be like an awesome weapon, but I don't want to fight a skitterer. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, well, there's the skitterer. And I'll note that the skitterer turn has already gone by, but even if it hadn't, anybody you spawn does not activate that turn. I'm laying all the standees down, but they suggest that if you're not doing that, you lay the miniature standee to show that it doesn't act. So man, I'm really torn here. Do I just run away with my third movement? Do I wait, let the skitterer attack me, move out and take damage, just push that thing? Do I kill the skitter and find out about the mother? <sighs> I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be a pacifist. I'm trying to be nice. Mothers deserve to be respected. So we're just going to run away and hope that we move faster than both those skitterers next turn. All right, and next is our buddy Drenosh. Let's see. For his first maneuver, I'm going to have him spend one stamina. That'll get him in range of seeing what that blue force field wants. We go one, two, three, within one of J. Oh, and within, no, we already saw E. That's the uh, healing item. A lightning doorway. The opening at the base of the hill is blocked by a wall of azure lightning. In front of the wall of light, you see a carving on the stone floor, the same size and shape as the runic plate you are carrying. Hey, that's the one Drenosh actually has. That's awesome. Clearing it of dirt and webs, you see it has the symbol of a leaf. Oh, wait, place runic plate leaf on the slot in the area containing the story point. Oh, we have the runic plate sun. So is this the wrong one? Yeah, huh. So that, that is interesting. Where could the other runic plate be? So all the way over here, there's like a hole in the ground with a letter. Down here is a different blue entryway. So maybe that would be the one we already have, the sun-shaped one. We've also got R. I mean, R could be for runic plate. <laughs> it's possible. Yeah, I think I'm going to try to go to R on my way over to you to see if we have the right plate for that one. So he's got a second maneuver. Oh man, he's running really out of stamina, but I'm going to spend another stamina to go one, two. I got to roll defense. It's a two agility attack whenever you go through those uh, sharp plants. Come on, come on. Ooh, no defense at all. Ugh. Okay, so he is almost out. Now we do have uh, this flower that we can use during our turn to heal two damage. So, I mean, I can use that, but there's no skitterers near me. I think I'm probably okay. Of course, with my luck, R stands for Rampage of Skitterers. Uh, let's see what it is. Ooh, a treasure out of reach. The chasm has split this historic house in two, drawing some of the moss and the dirt into the chasm. Amongst the debris, you spot something vibrating, and upon a closer look, realize it might be a runic plate. But how could you reach it? Try to reach it. Ugh. So hook and rope, Matajam has. That would give me plus two. I do have a shovel or an axe. That would be plus one success. But two dice trying to get a five with plus one is not that great. I really think we should wait for Matajam to get down here. He'd be a billion times better. And by the way, I didn't say, but this is just like attacking. You just roll the number of red dice for your stat, and you count successes, see if you succeed or fail. And for many of these tests, there is no penalty for failing. But here it looks like, I bet like the plate would fall into the pit more. I don't want that to happen. So yeah, I think I got to wait for my good guy or at least focus for Drenosh next turn so he can uh, succeed more likely. But either way, that is the end of the turn. Oh, not a five. Good, because I already got two skitterers on me. Right, so what am I doing on this turn? Matajam's in a bit of a bind. Definitely going to pick a red action again. Just hope he goes before these skitterers. So I could do Dancing Blade just to get an extra movement, even though I'm not attacking. But uh, I think I'm just going to do Focus, and that way I can like definitely grab that Healing Herb. I don't know if I'll make it to the Chasm this turn with him. And then Drenosh will take an extra maneuver, not because he has to move very far, but to heal all the stamina that he's lost. <laughs> and then he can uh, focus on doing stuff. 
So are the skitters going to get the jump on me again? <laughs> Thankfully, no. Look at this. It's going to be red and then then. They're going to move two after me, but that's it. No bonus movement. That's all good. So let's let Mata Jam go first. He'll spend a stamina to get three movement. And I'll go one, two. Remember, this was the light of the moon's plant. He's going to go for four agility. And he's got three and he's focusing. So he'll roll four dice. Should be pretty easy. And we'll see. Okay, ooh, that's two exploding and a stamina. We have one more die to roll, but that's already two successes. Three, four, no need to roll anymore. Wow, that was a lot. So the precious moon egg, you carefully pick the flower of the slender rush. You feel like the moon egg accepts you. Pleasant sentiments streaming from the pink stamen, progressively filling you with calm and happiness. Ooh, gain a moon egg and restore one stamina. Thank you. Ooh, this one is nice. If we get wounded, which means like we've lost all of our stamina and gotten flipped to our weaker side, we can take it away. Very good. And he's got one move left. So yeah, not reaching the chasm this turn, but next turn, definitely. And hopefully we're pretty far away from the Skitterers. As for Drenosh, for his first maneuver, let's start moving towards you and see what it's about. A wall of azure light. The opening at the base of the hill is blocked by a wall of azure light. On the ground to the right of the opening, you spot an indentation the same shape as a runic plate with the symbol of a moon. Darn it. <laughs> we don't have either of those. Let's see, for his second move, I guess he'll like go over here, maybe to get that mushroom in a second. But for his other maneuver, he's definitely going to recover. He could recover two damage or three stamina. While I have so much going, I think I'll do the three over the two just to have more. Okay, now the skitter is skitter. So this guy's going one, two towards us. And this guy comes crawling up out of the hole. Maybe I could like juke him to the side and then run in and check out the coffin. Nah, probably not. All right, we close out with a fate card. Still not a five, man. Are there any fives in here? And let's see, for actions this turn, I think Drenosh is still going to do an extra maneuver, stay red. And I still don't want those guys catching me, and Mana Jam's going to do that very important climbing test. So yeah, let's focus and just make it happen. Or I should say, maybe make it happen. Yes! Oh, the only result that would have gotten us before them, but they're going to move two after us. God, slow down, guys. Okay, I'm going to have Mana Jam go first, and I'm going to spend a stamina just to try to keep getting further away from those guys. So he'll go one, two, and then I assume three. So one here, he has to roll for that. But with three agility and focus, he's got four to roll. Oh, he's only blocked one so far. Come on. No, that is another damage for him. Second movie's in here. Let's try to get that thing. Not that it should be hard. I'm realizing I didn't really need my focus because I've got three agility and the hook and rope. Oh, and I can use a shovel or axe too. So heck yeah, remember you can switch what's in your hands once per round for free. So now I've got an axe and a hook and rope. That is plus three to the test. I only need a two with four dice. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously. <laughs> Got it. But yeah, focus, definitely not necessary. Hard work rewarded. You managed to dig out the runic plate from the chasm. Oh, why is it the one that's right towards the skitterers? As you hold the resonating object in your hands, you notice it is marked with a leaf symbol. The plate is clearly being drawn toward the hill. Okay, well, there we go. Well, he's got one move left, and that's towards the thing, but uh, they're going to be coming right towards us. Although, ooh, ooh, I've got a fun idea. I've got a fun idea. So I'm actually going to leave Matagem there and not use his last movement, although I can't get the stamina back. Or no, you know what? I'll even have him move one further away, because what I want to do is have Dranosh run to the west and pull these guys towards him and then run back while uh, Matagem opens the door. That's the plan, at least. So he is one, two, three, four away from the closest guy, which means Dranosh has to get to like one, two, three over here. So we can spend one stamina to get there. And then he can recover all three of it with his second maneuver. I'm liking that. I mean, we're slow playing a little bit, but we're staying safe. So then our skittery friends come out. Let's see. One, two, three. Or one, two, three. Okay, so I can choose to have him go this way. So Janosh has that way to run through. And the other one will be one, two. All right. And the fate card probably now is when I'll get a spawn. No? Oh, very nice. Okay, and for this new turn, no question about it. Janosh is going to have to go fast. Get the heck out of there. But I'm also going to give Matajam an extra maneuver, and he'll be a little bit slow, probably, but that's okay, as long as Drenosh can get over to him and they can get the door open. Oh, whoa, 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 this is a great card! Now, on the negative side, the blues have their eyes almost closed, which means their fastest movement. Or no, I guess there are only two, so that's not too bad. But they won't actually attack. But we each get a free extra maneuver this turn. Thank you! And just to show you what I meant, with the eye closed, they move two, but they cannot attack. But if they'd gotten a horn bonus, he would have moved four. So that would be the fastest they could go if they had this bonus. All right, so Drenosh is first. He has to go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so he'll spend one stamina to get three moves. And then, wait, did I count that totally wrong? One, two, three, four. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> 
So he won't spend any stamina. He'll do two basic maneuvers to get there. Don't fall down. Where are you going? Oh, crud. This can only hold one person. So I guess he'll just wait here for his friend. Which means he will spend one stamina. Because now with his other two maneuvers, bloom, bloom, gall, good to go. All right, meanwhile, Mata Jam needs to go one, two, three, four. Okay, so he'll do two basic maneuvers. I think that probably makes the most sense. So he's going to have to roll for defense, but we'll just keep going. Still to attack against agility. Oh my gosh, that makes up for last time. Thanks. All right, now he's back at the lightning doorway. He's still got one maneuver left. We will place the rune in. The runes are aligned. You carefully place the wildly vibrating runic plate on the stone carving. They attach together with a satisfying click. The runic plate goes still, crackles with magical power, and you see the lightning disappear from the doorway. Yes. And you know, I just realized they referred to X's on that card. I forgot to follow instructions. I was supposed to have these all marked off as impassable. So now this one is open. So I could have Matajam run in and start seeing what like K and X and all these things are. What is that? I don't like it. But I don't want to leave Dranash too far behind, so let's go ahead and get back three stamina for his last maneuver. Man, these guys are not going to leave me alone. If I keep on choosing not to fight them, it's not going to necessarily go well. And fate, still not a five, okay. All right, I'm back with Matajam just being slow with the extra maneuver. Both those guys could catch me, I could face two attacks. <sighs> Although, you know, part of me wants to let Matajam stay behind, maybe with a focus on... With four defense dice, he probably wouldn't get hurt by them. Oh, but that's only if they do the action that uh, hits agility. If they do the strength attack, that would be pretty bad for me. But yeah, you know, I still like that. It's faster. I'm going to have Drenosh do the extra maneuver, which is also red. We'll probably go before them. Let's see how it goes. Oh, and this was probably the best possible. We get the red. We can get away from them. And they are doing the full eyeball, which is the strongest attack, but only one movement. Bye-bye. And I think I'm actually going to have Dranosh go first. So you can't end your turn on a space that's full like this one, but you can pass through it and end on a different space. So he's got two maneuvers. And since he just fully healed all his stamina, let's spend one and get three moves. So he'll go one, two. Let's see what K says. Oh, and what X says. The corridors inside the hill differ greatly from the surrounding town. The walls are expertly made of white stone and illuminated by magic. This must be one of the structures left behind by the ancients millennia ago, but now evil power sparkles all around you. Danger! Oh gosh, another story card. Two of the rooms have slots outside them. You may place the runic plate with the matching symbol on the slot to remove the adjacent X marker. Oh man, I feel dumb. <laughs> Look, it literally tells me that the sun one I already have goes to that door. Yeah, there you go, Mike. Separately, oh my gosh, whenever you enter an area containing one of the symbols below, perform the corresponding ability check or take damage. So, huh. so the rocks are a strength one, and the whatever the heck that is, gas or something, is agility, and then the little crack is brains. And Drenosh is proud to be equally mediocre at all of those, so <laughs> we'll just see how it goes. Yeah, Matajam's focus seems like a smarter choice now. Okay, but let's also look at what X is, and we gotta look at what the square thing is, too. Okay, rocks and rubble. The floors of the corridor are covered in fallen rocks and debris. Next to a huge rockfall is plenty of rubble that you should pay little attention to, except something seems to be moving under it. That seems, that seems like the worst idea. <laughs> I don't want to flip something up and have like another skitter come out. Though I do have the shovel. Drenash has the shovel, so I'd have a plus two and I have a chance to do that. Should I do it? Should I do it? Well, but here's the thing. There's like a random flower that I have definitely not seen yet. And I haven't seen anything that removes the red to actually like get into the inner sanctum. So pfft, maybe I'll look. Yeah, one more card. Oh, gosh. Summoning circles. The unmistakable presence of evil magic is confirmed by the recently etched summoning circles. You recognize the four pointed arrows, a symbol of Aox, and the demonic ruins suggest uncanny knowledge. Oh, we got a new enemy type number three. I guess we skipped number two because that was the uh, spider mother. All right, so it says start a timer. What's going to happen is now every time that I discard a fate card at the end of the round, besides seeing if I summon skitterers, I'm going to put it to the side and I'm going to sum up the fate cards that they keep on getting drawn until we reach 12 or higher for two heroes. And then we're going to spawn a lumen demon in the area corresponding to whichever uh, arrow I got. And then each time a lumen demon is summoned, place an X marker on its slot. Oh, and if we get four demons summoned, then we fail automatically. But we fail forward. We'll still continue the campaign, but maybe not well. <laughs> All right, so even more to worry about, but let's dig in some rocks. I'm going here for my third action. I'm going to have to roll uh, all his abilities or two, so it doesn't matter which one that was. Man, three damage. Oh, that was a good roll. I only take one. So Jernosh is still looking pretty darn fresh. And he's going to do his free switch to get his shovel in hand. He only has two hands, unlike Matajam, so he can't hold them both. 
So he'll roll his two strength dice with plus two successes, see if he can get in there. Worst case, I guess I can use an achievement, or maybe not. One, two with the crit. Okay, we gotta spend a stamina, but we got it. All right, don't be a skitterer, don't be a skitterer. Yes! <laughs> Underneath the rubble, you discover a glowing Agura crystal, another one, and dusty runic plate, now vibrating in your hands. It features a carving in the shape of a butterfly, which is a symbol of Somanai, the goddess of love. Wow, that was definitely good to dig in there. All right, Trinash is just a plate and crystal demon over here. <laughs> good to go. So with that in mind, oh, there's the summoning thing. For his second maneuver, he's going to spend another stamina. So he spent three and he's got one damaged. To go one, two, three, and we'll go ahead and put that plate in and open this doorway up so we can get in to see what M is soon. Maybe I can get uh, Matajam to do that. So speaking of Matajam, he did the focus action, although I could give that up, give up the uh, plus one die to instead move one extra. But that seems like a bad idea. So he's terrible at that one. He's decent at that one because that's strength. So if he moved one extra, he can go one, two, three by spending a stamina. Let's do that. And with his focus, he's going to roll three dice instead of two to oppose that. Now the skitters will be farther away. Yes, he can uh, hopefully do an extra maneuver and really move. But first, let's see what our friendly timer says. Awesome. Lower is better. Not a five to spawn and not building up to 12 very quickly. So we'll put that to the side and that two will then sum up with whatever comes next. Oh, wait, I forgot our friends over here. Oh, and one of them can't fit. That is awesome. So they'll be even a little bit staggered away from us. I guess eight should be in there first, shouldn't he? There we go. All right, theoretically, the Skitterers could reach Matajam, but it seems pretty unlikely. So I'm going to give him an extra maneuver and also Drenash. I just want to run as fast as I can before these demons show up. So that means Drenash is red. Matajam is green. What? Haha, <laughs> green is first. And then blues moving at two and then red. So I think we'll both be safe this turn pretty easily. But no bonus maneuver for us, only for blue. So Matajam's going to go with his two maneuvers. Oh, crud. That's the one that he's the worst at. And this is the one he's the best at. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's like poison gas or sludge on the ground. So if I let Dranosh go in there, since he's better at defending against that, the Matajam could like go see what W says and how the heck we get in there. We could run over to Drenosh because you can freely trade stuff when you're in the same space. Get the uh, leaf thing here and then run past that. Yeah, I like that. So he's going to spend one stamina and move three. So one, two, give me a runic plate. You know, it'll take a crystal two because they can both have one. And then three. And then for his second maneuver, he's going to spend another stamina against stamina low. So there he'll get attacked, but he has three agility. One, two, he'll open it up and then run it and see what T is. But let's deal with this. Oh, okay, two damage. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Um, He's going to eat his healing flower to get two of those back because I don't want to be in that position. Okay, but he's got two movement left. So one, he'll go ahead and open this up. I guess he could see through that what T is before he opens it up. Let's make sure it's not like a demon. The picture chamber, the long walls of his chamber is covered in exquisite mosaics representing birds and beasts. Against the wall had once been a beautiful stone table, but it's broken and has collapsed. You feel a magical sensation and see a weak light coming from it. Ooh, and this one he's good at, and there's no skitterer to get him, so we're definitely going to do that. So he's got one movement point left. He'll open this thing up, and let's go explore that. Ooh, and I can see what's over at S, even through the poison gas. A spear of the ancients. Hanging on the wall, you see a beautifully decorated spear. It must have been something used by the ancients in their rituals, or perhaps just a decoration. Been remarkably well preserved and would still make a good weapon. Yes, I want a magic spear. Give me a break here. Oh, man, I gotta go through that poison gas though and not die. Uh, it would be okay. But first, we're right here. We need to get four successes. He's got three agility, a good thing. And I've still got achievement tokens if I need them. But no, I don't. What a roll. I don't even need the crit. Under the broken table, amidst the rocks and rubble, you find lots of broken glass. Once there had been bottles on the table, now all destroyed but one. Gain the Potion of Healing item card. Remove this from the game. Ooh, discard to heal five? Yes, please. All right, that was Matajam. Now the Skitterers are going to move two, and then Drenosh will go. So let's see. One, two, and they'll take one damage each time they go through these things. So they could eventually die just from chasing me a lot, which I love. But yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. They'll definitely go this way. So one, two, number eight takes a damage. And the mother only cares when I attack them, not when uh, they run into force fields. So I think I'm okay. And then nine uh, comes behind. But now Drenosh needs to get in and out quickly. I'm going to spend a stamina to move three for his first maneuver. So he'll go one, get attacked, and we'll see what M is. Let's do the attack first. So three damage. He's only got two in all his stats. Oh, I love you. So just one damage. Not too bad. Oh, no, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. 
So this is an ongoing test. <laughs> we can keep on doing it and every success builds up. A mill of ruins. Close to the stone table, there seems to be a millstone half embedded in the floor itself. The heavy wheel is marked with glowing ruins and there is an axis in the middle suggesting it can be rotated. I'm guessing that I got to rotate that to turn off the red one, right? That just kind of makes sense. But yeah, I need to build up a uh, two times number of players. That's four plus four, eight successes over. Uh, you can only do one a turn for each character if they're there. While the skitterers are coming after me. <sighs> All right, well, we're going to try it. All right, so he'll come in here. He'll go in and do the millstone. He sells one more maneuver, and I think I'm going to stay there. All right, he's only got two strength. Come on, now's when I need that crazy roll. Or that. Uh, hmm. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend two stamina. I'm going to spend two stamina and an achievement token. Because that gets me to four halfway there. And if I can get maybe like focus next turn to make sure I get the other four, I can uh, finish this thing up with just Renash, not need Mata Jam to run through the death that's over there at all. So here we go. They have lots of dice to track enemy damage and stuff. So that's four out of eight. For my other maneuver, man, he is not looking great. Let's get a three back. And should he heal the other two? I don't need two yet. I don't need two yet. All right, here comes some fun. What is the fake card? A four. So that is six out of 12. Still no spawning skitters. I don't think fives exist in this deck. <laughs> All right, now what to do? I think Trinash needs to focus to make sure I finish off the force field, even though it means it'll have a tough time getting away from the skitterers. Whereas Matajam's not really in a hurry, so I think he'll focus as well because he has to go through the gas back and forth to get the stupid spear. So yeah, I think that's probably the right call too. So he's a red, Drenosh is a blue. Oh man, they're moving extra, but luckily they did the slow move, so they're only moving two. I don't think they'll reach either of us unless we let them. So Drenosh goes before them and then Matajam after him. So Drenosh is going to try to finish this off. He has three dice now with the focus. And ooh, okay, I like that. So that's a two with the crit. The stamina will serve me. Oh, three with the crit, do it! Four with the crit! <laughs> I knocked that, but that's already done. We got it. I guess I didn't need to use the achievement token if I was just going to keep on going with crits. You rotate the heavy millstone half a turn, and then it stops. The runes glow green for a while and trigger some unseen mechanism that starts to shake the whole vault. You hear rumbling in the distance like a part of a hill is coming apart. The power is now off. If story card L has been revealed, it is not, uh, flip it. If not, reveal it and flip it, and then reveal story card Caltrop, or whatever that shape is. There's still an X marker overlapping the area containing J, remove it, and then reveal and flip story card A, if already revealed, flip it. Okay, so <laughs> there's a lot. Uh, so L, reveal and flip, Caltrop, uh, get rid of J, and then reveal and flip A. All right, so it's Wall of Lightning, and it's powered down immediately. So uh, yeah, oh, we get rid of the X from L. Where is that? Past the red, that's not what I wanted. I want to get to that, although that might be what I need to get to. So that's maybe cool. Okay, next was Caltrop, and this looks bad. A whole lot of shaken. Dust falls in you as the walls tremble and the ceiling shakes. Maybe I should not have done this. You sense a disturbance in the forest now. The magical aura of the whole vault. One of the entrances collapses with a great rubble of stone. Then just as suddenly it started, the tremors die down. Speckles of dust gently settle on the ground. Oh, oh, where is this? Oh, man, come on. <laughs> if the skitters had not gotten in... Oh, no, I, never mind. I guess it's not blocked off. You can still get through there, but... It does create more areas, so more skitters will be gone. Okay, so clearly, if I'd not opened that door, it would have been open anyway. I'll get that lined up. All right, so the skitters are still in there. Oh, what? What? A is the mother? I was being so cool. I was being sneaky. I mean, I guess, yeah, she would know. She would know that I broke the entire, like, place open. Angry mama. You should not have angered the hive mother. I had no choice. Well, I don't know if I did. Maybe I didn't need to uh, turn off the power. She rises up, hissing menacingly, moving her long legs with surprising speed and accuracy. The ground is full of egg sacs and rotting carcasses, but she manages to lunge at you without harming... Well, not lunge at me. She will harm you, though. Uh, okay, so we get monster card two. Spawn the hive mother in the area containing A. Okay, well, at least she'll be far away. Yeah, she is way out of position. Let's see what she can do. On the special, she spawns a skitter, of course. She can move up to three sometimes, even more with a charge. She attacks pretty hard. She can entangle us, weaken us. Oh, and she drops an Aguro Crystal if you kill her. But um, <laughs> I don't think she'll reach us, so we should be okay. I still feel good about not pissing her off until late, late game. How much life does she have? Whoa, 15? Yeah, I still think it was a good call what I did. Okay, so now the question becomes, what does this guy do? He still got his maneuver. Uh, these guys are moving two. So one, two, one, two. This guy could get to here. So if I go one, two, three, 
I can get out of there and kind of dodge away. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to spend a stamina, run through that crackling energy to three. The focus will help, though. See, I've got three defense instead of two to roll. Whoa! <laughs> Thank you. And the skitterers are next. So one, two, and uh, let's see. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. So he'll go through here, but that'll be another damage for or the first damage for nine. They both have one. At this point, I can kill him, though, because mommy's coming anyway. So that's at least a freeing feeling. All right, the mom's stunned anyway, so let's have Matajam go. He's got focus, and man, I'm kind of low on stamina. But I want my focus to apply to both times I go through this. So I'm going to spend a stamina, even though I don't have very much, to get three movement. And I'm going to eat my mushroom to recover two stamina, because otherwise I don't think I'll survive this. But dang it, I want that spear. So one, two, get the spear three. That's at least the idea. Let's roll for the first defense. He's focused, and that's the one he's good at, so I'm hopeful. I am less hopeful. Okay, I take uh, two damage. Gosh. Yeah, this is not good. I mean, at least he's got the unwounding thing, but come on. Oh, he's also got the potion of healing. Yeah, might have to drink that in a second. But second move, running in to see that spear. And no test needed. Why did I focus? I guess it was for the poison gas. Ooh, that looks cool. Weapons of the Ancients are incredibly rare and expensive. This one is exquisitely made. It has perhaps been used by their high priests or generals in important ceremonies. There's a slot in the shaft for an Agur crystal, implying the spear has hidden properties. Yes. All right, so let's equip uh, the small bow and the ceremonial spear. We don't need the axe or the rope right now. So let's look at this thing. Plus one damage. It's not a ranged weapon, but it can attack one space away. And... Plus one red if you slot a crystal into it. Heck yes, I'm glad I gave it to him. So he is going to be a beast. So Dancing Blade will be three dice plus one damage with a spear, and Aim Shot will be three dice minus one. So clearly one of those is better. But that was cool. I feel less bad about leaving that sarcophagus. Let's run back through the gas. And if this goes poorly, I definitely have a potion with this guy's name on it. Come on, one more die for the four. Gosh. So yeah, that is one plus one from his supply okay definitely before his turn is done gonna drink this it doesn't even heal all of them wow you are a mess speaking of a possible mess what does fate have in store another four so that's uh eight ten now the negative thing is when the timer goes off the last card also stays around so i would love for the next card to be a one or even a two would be okay just like not a five that would suck because again that five will complete the 12 or more spawn a demon and it'll stick around to make the next timer that much quicker all right, so we've done about everything there is to do in uh, here, except for W. I still have no idea if we could actually get through there. <laughs> so uh, we'll see what happens. All right, I'm going to have... Oh, that's right. I don't have to run away from that anymore. So let's, let's murderfy <laughs> one of these guys. Do I want to do... I guess I'll do a red and try to go faster. And Matajam wants to know if they want to dance. Although, wait, can he reach them? Oh, with his plus one move, I'm sure he can. So, yeah, baby, dancing blade. So they're both reds. Let's see if that works for us. It does not. Although, actually, it does. Ooh, this is really good. Because they got the activation that has them do basically nothing. Although, the uh, mother is also moving. So, it's going to be the skitterers, then the mother, and then us. So Skitter 8 comes in, but now nobody else can fit. So Skitter 9 just hangs out. They don't attack. Thank you. And Mother just moves 2. Okay. Here she comes, very far away. All right, now I'm going to have uh, Dronosh go first, have him attack. Because the disengage ability I picked has evade 1, so we can actually get away from that Skitter on his space without taking any damage. So he will, of course, switch to his Great Axe for plus 1 damage. He has to spend 1 stamina, which is definitely not ideal. Remember, both of these skitters took one damage from the environment, so he's got two dice plus one from the axe. All I need to do is three damage, and the guy's dead. Oh! Don't even need the axe. Bye. Although now I don't think the Matajam can reach them, can he? One, two, three, plus one. Yeah, so he can't get there without using an achievement uh, thing, which maybe he will. But let's have Dranash do just a basic maneuver to save some stamina. So he'll run through here, probably get hurt, and then go there. Okay, two defense. Wow, good rolling. So he takes a damage. He's almost out of stamina. And a wall of ruby light. The corridor is blocked by a wall of ruby light, which radiates an energy quite different to the rest of the building. You could just try to move through it, but who knows how the Aox magic may curse you. Yeah, that seems like a bad thing. Okay, well, I don't have any movement left, but I can just try to move through. Wow. All right, as for Matajam, he's going to move one, two... I guess he'll stop there, because that way if the skitterer goes before us, he won't hit us. 
And since he doesn't need to use Dancing Blade, he can switch his action. He can either move one or recover one. Let's recover. But here we go, unless it's a one. Okay, three. So we are spawning a demon. But it could have been a lot worse in terms of what sticks around for the next timer. So we'll need nine more before the timer goes off again. And it's up, which was, oh, the room inside where I'm going. That seems potentially bad. What are these guys like? Eight life. That's, that's pretty, pretty high. Uh, they do an attack uh, if you're in their space when they get a special. And they attack very hard. They move very fast. They can make you bleed. They drop blood crystals. That sounds maybe cool. Oh, and they're red, so they tend to move very quickly. Well, isn't that glorious? And let's not forget we're one-fourth of the way to an implosion that'll just end the scenario. All right, well, let's see. For this turn, uh, is going to do the Dancing Blade, I think, to uh, kill somebody. Whereas Dranash, I kind of want to have him go after the demon, because the demon should go faster, and right now the gate is still up. So I'm going to do Lingering Heave. My plan is to hopefully have the demon go first, stop at the gate, and then I can run in and stab him. So that's red for Matajam, uh, green for Dranash, and every enemy is out. Okay, good. So red enemies go first. Then it'll be Matajam, then the Mommy, then Drenash, and then the Skitterer. That seems pretty good to me. So red fully open eyeball is two movement and then a three strength attack. But in this case, he's just going to stop right here where we wanted him to. Perfect. Now Matajam is up. You know, I guess I should have used my bow. That would have been smarter. <laughs> because then I could have just sat here, shot the guy, and probably killed him. I mean, uh, maybe I should just run through with Matajam. Do I kill or care about the Skitterer? No, I, I don't really, right? So yeah, Matajam's got a maneuver, and then his Dancing Blade will move him one more. So let's just eat that force field and see what happens. So we're going to move one, two for the maneuver. Uh, we'll take that, and then we'll use Dancing Blade to move one more and then attack. And yeah, we'll just see what happens. So maneuvering first, please don't kill me. Okay, that was pretty good. Just one damage, I can take that. Now, oh, what's going to happen? Oh my god. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> As you step into the ruby light, you realize it may have been a mistake. The evil magic bombards your body, crawling inside it like a vile disease. It takes all your energy to force your way through to the other side. Looking back, you see the wall has been changed after feeding on you. Ugh. It now has specks of a purplish hue similar to the color of a lumen demon, like the guys that are being summoned. Okay, so, uh, oh my gosh, any hero moving through the ruby wall takes five damage opposed by strength. If you take any damage, gain an injury card. Oh, and now demons may move through the ruby wall freely, so great. Okay, don't kill me too much, please. Okay, that was about the best I could have done. So I'm taking three damage and an injury card. So injury cards, they give you an ongoing thing, minus one movement. Now that's just to my maneuver, which I already used, so I can still dance my blade in and attack that guy, but yeah. Well, let's get some positives. I'm doing dancing blade. Ooh, I had to spend one stamina. I'm almost completely out. So I'm going to roll three dice. I could have attacked from range one away, but not with the uh, gate between us. And plus one to the three dice. Gotta say, that sounds pretty good to me. Even with eight life, hopefully I can hit this. Come on. Come on, really? Well, he's half dead. I mean, that's, that's a good start. All right, next is Mama Half Eye Horn. Oh, dear. Four movement. Suddenly I think she'll be closer. One, two, three, four. She's already inside. Although it says every enemy takes damage from these things. That makes me feel a little bit better. All right, now Dranash is up. Yeah, he is not going to survive walking through that thing. Let's use both of our healing things. So that heals two with that. And the mushroom recovers two. Thank God I had these. So yeah, that hopefully is enough. He's going to uh, move through with his maneuver. And then great axe the guy in the face and hopefully kill him. Oh, wait, 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 I forgot that there was a P beyond the door. A wall of ruby light. The corridor is blocked by a wall of ruby light. Next to the magical wall, an evil mark has been hastily scrawled on the floor. Oh, so I could have destroyed it so that my other guy wouldn't have to take damage. But huh, it's okay. And, and the good thing is, I think, yeah, yeah, only the demons can move through it, not the mother and the baby. So I'm out. The skitterers have nothing to do with this battle anymore. Awesome. Well, that doesn't change if this is happening. Let's roll for it. Only two dies. Come on. Come on. Oof. Four damage. Oh, thank God, I healed. Ah! And he's got an injury. I pulled back. Minus one to his strength stat. Ugh. But it's okay. He's still attacking with his axe. We need four damage. Just kill that demon before he does anything. Ooh. Okay, with the axe, it's plus one. I don't have enough stamina. Look, I've only got one to spend. So that's one. Plus one is two. Plus one for my axe is three. 
plus another achievement is four. Got him, though. Whew. I should have had uh, Matajam use the achievement because uh, he has four left and Janosh only has one. But we have gone from tons of enemies to basically none. Basically none because these guys can't get in. I'm not even going to like bother moving them anymore. Awesome. Oh, and whoops, I didn't even check. There's so much stuff in here. Z. I got to look what Z is. Shantor's saving sphere. Down in the vault, you see Shantor lying inside a magical bubble, the only thing saving her from the magical lightning and red Aox energy crackling in the room. You might be able to save her if you could stop the two magics clashing in the vault. Oh, and we can look closer from where we are. So we reveal a diamond. And if we save the scrolls in tutorial one, we flip. We did do that. Oh, it's just another card. The sight of Shantor in this terrible state fills you with dread. You might be able to save her if you... Could stop the two magics clashing in the room. Oh, okay, cool. That's cool. Look, it's like a picture of her in there. Oh, it's so awesome. But then I also get to flip it because I saved the scrolls. The scroll of empowerment. You see a scroll case on the vault floor. It seems like the signet of the case has been broken. From inside the scroll case, wait, do I have to be? No, this is range one. From inside the scroll case, you find a frail looking scroll displaying the symbol of the fifth eye. Reading out the powerful arcane words in the scroll restores stamina to all friends within range of the spell. That sounds great. Well, look at that. For a maneuver, I can discard this, and everyone within two of me, including myself, would heal five of stamina. I love it. All right, so let's figure this out. Here, get out of here, guys. There's P, and there's N. Orienting's hard. There we go. That looks pretty much like it. Okay, cool. So we got Z, we got L and K, and of course, there's death energy all over the place. You know what? Drenosh actually had one move left. So let's go to the safe way first and go see what Q has to offer before this turn ends. And finally, the skitters would move too. I'll just get them up to the uh, gate. Uh, at some point, it might shut down automatically and they'll come to say hi, but hopefully not. And ooh, only a two for the fate card. Yeah, these guys aren't coming out too soon. Love it. And for this turn, definitely extra maneuvering for both of them, if only to heal. All right, so uh, Matajam will be first. And these guys will just move up to the gate, of course. And then Drenosh will be second. Or sorry, reverse that. Drenosh is first, Matajam second. Okay, this guy says hi. Oh, and he took a damage from the poison. All right, Drenosh is going to use his first uh, maneuver to go here. Look at Q. There's a little left of this room as someone has recently broken the wall, leaving only a pile of rocks and dust in a summoning circle for Aox demons. In the corner of the room, you see a pedestal which seems to be meant for an Agura crystal. But there's just a runic plate on the floor leaning against the pedestal. Okay, so if we move in there, we can get this runic plate. Oh, and for a maneuver, we can put a Guru Crystal in there, which we do have one of. Awesome. But yeah, for now, forget it. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Actually, you know what? What the hell? Let's use the scroll, too. Oh, no, I don't have another maneuver. Never mind. Never mind. But yeah, we'll just heal two for the second maneuver. Okay, Matajam is next. I want to go through that crud. So let's go one, two, and see what K has to offer. Oh, you know, I just remembered. Uh, Drenash should have a blood crystal from killing that demon. We might need that. Oh, K is just the one that tells us about the traps. Could we have, like, gone through the hole up in the corner there, maybe? Huh. That's interesting to try out the next time I play this. Yeah, Mana Jam's not going to move in for his second maneuver. Too damaging. He's also going to heal two stamina. There we go. Finally, the queen moves two, takes one damage out of, what was it, 20? A lot. It's a lot. And we get another fate card. Okay. So that's Eight. Oh, so a four or five next turn would spawn another demon. Hopefully it'll be the further away spot. I guess we'll see. And right, I'm still a ball about extra maneuvering here. Let's do that for both of them. Okay, this is uh, okay. So that guy's not going to do anything. Oh, actually, he's going to regenerate all of his damage. The uh, regular little skitterer. No demon. So then it'll be Drenosh. The queen will move uh, closer, take another damage. And it'll be Matajam. So skitterer 9 is fully healed. Drenosh is going to use a maneuver. I think he'll spend one stamina to get three moves. So he'll go in here. He'll pick up that runic plate. He'll use his second maneuver to... F oh, wait. If I use my second maneuver, then my first maneuver ends. So you know what? I'm not going to spend a stamina because I can only use one movement before I got to do this. So I lose my Agura Crystal. Oh, but this seems good. Perfect fit. You place an Agura Crystal on the pedestal and it fits in perfectly into the hole. The Agura Crystal starts to shine with an ethereal luminescence, giving the whole room a blue glow, which has a warming and refreshing effect. You get the feeling it has also had an effect elsewhere in the ancient structures under the hill, but it is not clear from here what that was. Okay, any hero currently in Area 1 containing Q heal three stamina. Oh, that's where we are. Okay, so that's good. Drenosh gets three stamina back. Now we definitely don't need to use the scroll. But that's it for his turn. Oh, you know, I just realized I forgot Matajam had an injured knee. I'm going to take an extra stamina to make his move legal. And before Matajam, Queen moves two more, takes a damage. Hopefully she can't come in. All right, now Matajam. 
This place is like the worst for him. So before I possibly run through, let's do one, two maneuvers. Almost fully healed. That's awesome. But what might be less awesome is this. Oh, it's a five. Although, good, good, good. It's the side one, which means the demon will be behind us quite a bit. Yeah, all the way back here. I'm fine with that. That's two out of four. And hey, look, another skitterer that I don't think we need to care about. <laughs> That's where we're going to do this turn. I think Matagem's going to try to run through that stuff, so he'll focus. And turn also do the extra maneuver. So that's red initiative for both of them. They go before everybody. Okay. I'm actually going to have Dronosh go first because he probably has a thing to let us get in there, right? It's got to be that runic plate we just found. God, I hope so. Oh, no, no, that's right. That one went down because we took out the power. So L is already gone. But yeah, I want him to go because he has the blood crystal. So that way we'll have one of each kind of crystal to potentially turn this one off. Okay, so first maneuver. How far does he have to go? One, two, three, four, five, six. So a double move would get him in there himself. So let's try that. So, okay, one stamina to go one, two, three, and then another stamina to go one, attacked, two, attacked, three, I guess, well, two, we'll see what's here. And he's pretty hurt. Here's the first attack, we take two damage, and the second attack, we take two damage. So, lordy, that is almost dead. But we still got one move left. Let's see what N says. Oh my god, ball lightning. All the pent-up magic is gathered into a powerful ball of energy that floats, crackling at the back of the room. The air is heavy with the pungent smell of burnt dust and the deafening hum of magic. Deadly lightning randomly strikes at the walls and floors. The ball is feeding itself with energy in a vicious cycle and is about to implode. Okay, so we can connect with the ball lightning as an action. Oh my gosh, if story card Q is flipped, that was the one that I did, right? Yes! So each time we do this action, we get plus ton successes? Like every time? Wow, so we only need 20? So if each of them do it, then we win? I think that's right. I mean, gosh, I hope. So yeah, he's definitely using his last move to go in there. He's got two willpower plus 10 from Q. So I think that's one, two, three, four. So 14 out of 20? Yeah, I mean, if I'm reading that right, then it's an automatic thing if Matajan gets in there. First, the demon's doing two movement. Not enough, buddy. If that gosh could even fit in there. Yes, he can. Okay, so he's in there with the hive mother. Oh, no, he's not. That's right. Matagem is also red, so we're still going. So he just needs to survive and get in there. Oh, wait, his movement won't let him. Ha ha. Now he'll use an achievement crystal to get three movement with one stamina spent and his wounded knee. So bam, bam, go. With focus being his action. Okay, wow. So he uh, took no damage from the first one. He normally has one brain. He's got a second one from the focus, so he takes two damage. But he gets in there. Let's try to do the ball lightning. I think I get plus 10 again. I mean, if I'm wrong, we'd have to do one more turn, but that's not a big deal. So he gets two. Okay, so there's one, a two. And he could spend two stamina. That would get it to 18. But again, I think it's plus 10 for each action. That's at least how it's written. So flip. Come on, this has to be it. Yes. Harmony, you communicate with the magical ball telepathically and force it to calm down. It still lets out the occasional lightning strike, but the self-feeding cycle and the risk of implosion are gone. The hum slowly dies out and everything seems much calmer. With the magic that attracted and agitated, the monster is gone. The creatures now flee from the vault. Read Climax 1, scenario success, woo! You manage to redirect and shut down the clashing magical energies. The magical lightning is grounded and dissipates. The rumbling turns into a whisper and then dies out. In the vault's central chamber, Shantor lies, barely breathing as the magical bubble surrounding her vanishes. She breathes heavily, she turns to speak to you. I may well be the last keeper of the breach left. You must now fulfill my quest. Here, use this key to access Skyrender in Runedale. It is one of the beacons you must light to prevent Aox from entering Agamonia from the breach. You see she is in pain and exhausted, but still manages to conjure a weary smile. I hope to see you again, Keepers. She seems to have one last ounce of magic left, as the world turns around her and her body disappears, leaving only her empty robes behind. You have a tangling sensation suggesting she's not dead, but gone to a different place. You have barely picked up the ancient key your newfound mentor left behind when something even stranger happens. The big stone head carved in the wall comes alive. Its ice blue eyes stare at you and its voice booms low, but it is not menacing, rather you feel comforted by its presence. The fate of Agamonia now lies in your hands, it declares. Each one of you has a power to make a difference, but also a chance to veer away from the light. Your destinies are unwritten, but they will be intertwined. The choices you make individually and together will determine the fate of all. You realize this is not just a statue which speaks. This is the voice of Ayun, the good energy that opposes Aox and the demons. Its voice no longer booms in the chamber, but is now heard inside your heads, all of you experiencing a different vision. 
Okay, gain quest item card, ancient key, gain group card, Shanter watches over you, not in the prototype. I mean, this is the end. And each hero gains a vision card. Huh. Well, it says don't show it to the other players, so here they are, but we'll leave that as a unrevealed spoiler. And let's see, if Birdie's still in one piece, it's not. That was the wagon that got destroyed. But Legionary, the animal's still alive, the Togrel. The destructive magic has destroyed Shantor's enchanted wagon Birdie. Her Togrel Legionary whimpers next to the wreckage. The beast's fur is slightly scorched, but otherwise it seems none the worse for wear. You calm it and take it along to Runedale, where it will perhaps meet others of its kind. Okay, we gain... Okay, now in the prototype again. Let's see how we did. Uh, achievements. H, U, and Y have been drawn. That would be a no. We miss at least one of those. Uh, no enemies were defeated. No. All demons were defeated. No. This is not looking great. Treasure Hoarders. You succeeded at the progressive will check on story card N without discarding any Agura crystals and without placing one on the pedestal at Q. Well, no. <laughs> okay. Giant Killer. Individual. The Hive Mother was defeated. No. Bullheaded. Your hero attempted the reactive might check on story card W. And there we go. For being idiots and running through the wall, we uh, got that. So that's uh, an individual one, but we both got it. So that's an achievement token for each of us. All for one and one for all. Your hero took the ceremonial spear off the wall, but either gave it to another hero or dropped it and another hero picked it up. No, I didn't know that. And then we definitely did not finish the scenario unwounded on maximum stamina. So, okay, just one achievement for each of us. Man, we spent a lot of resources, but we survived. And the cool thing is there were lots of things I didn't see. I didn't kill the hive mother. I never went to that hole. Uh, so I think this one has a good amount of replay. Definitely liking that. Here we go, a final little epilogue to close things out. You turn your backs on the ruins and the vaults of the ancients and continue on your way to Runedale. Each of you is silently pondering Shantor's fate and the strange vision you beheld, wondering whether to share it with the others or to keep it to yourselves. The sun sets to your left, painting the sky with brushstrokes of cyan and rose. In the horizon, you see the smoke rising from Runedale's chimneys. As you keep traveling, one thing is clear to all of you. The fate of Agamonia lies in your hands. Yes. <laughs> All right, so just to follow up on my impressions, that was an awesome scenario. And there's like lots of cool stuff to see. I would want to play that one again, definitely, like on another go through of the campaign. Man, that was fun. I uh, hope you all enjoyed watching. For those who uh, watched and didn't mind the spoilers, I thought that was a blast. But let me know in the comments what you think of the game. I'm definitely going to pledge it. Uh, if they don't give me a review copy, I'm all in. Uh, but uh, if you like it, think of doing the same. But thanks for watching, everybody. And we'll see you at the next stop.